Hello, it's another fascinating time on Newsline. I am Jennifer Igwe. As usual, I'm steering the ship. So no dull moments, I can assure you. Now pause for a moment and try to imagine a world without teachers. Extremely unimaginable. From cradle to grave, they are there, shaping lives and adding lifelong values. To all teachers, we love and celebrate you and cannot thank you enough for your selfless nature and the extra mile you go to help us learn. On our lineup today, as part of activities to honor teachers, we will be showcasing one of the strategies employed by a teacher to educate new pupils. It's a must watch. The teachers, like our parents, have also taught us to smile particularly courteously in appropriate situations. And for those who have overlooked these lessons, we have features that will serve as reminders, including help you understand the health benefits of laughing and smiling. And on cue today is a story that will surely wipe smiles off your face, for sure. It's an ugly action any right-thinking person would frown at. The fate of a helpless newborn is involved. What am I driving at? What am I talking about? Stay tuned for this story that is contrary to moral values. Also on our serving today are age-long cultural traditions and festivities that amplify the beauty of our positive cultural heritage from Nupe land, where women have prominent roles in running the cultural society, to Ngaz Joss, where a unique festival commands attention of all sons and daughters, plus humanitarian donations by one of Nigeria's leading indigenous brands. You can see we're loaded, so let the show start. And Claire Adilabo Abdurazak in Abuja is set for the news. Hello, Claire. Absolutely, Jenny, your package is loaded. And I'd like to talk about, you know, quite a number of them, but of course, you know, we don't have the time. Smiles. Smile a day and you won't grow old. And teachers, they make everything possible. All right, so I'll see you after the news, Jennifer. Hello and welcome to our Buja Studios and to the news. The federal government of Nigeria joins the rights of the world to call for de-escalation and ceasefire in the ongoing hostilities between Israel and Hamas, which broke in the early hours of Saturday. A statement by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Tugga, urges both sides to exercise restraint as retaliation only adds pain and suffering to the civilian population. Minister Tugga says both sides should prioritize the safety of civilians and give room for humanitarian assistance. He also calls for peaceful resolution of the conflict through dialogue. Meanwhile, the Nigerian government says it wants to propel the country to new heights of innovation and technological advancement. Now, to achieve this, Executive Order Number 5 will be deployed to develop and promote local content. The move the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation says alliance with the eight-point renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu. And that correspondent, Justin Bemoye, tells us more. Doing his um, refinery, the welders that were used all came from another country because we don't have ISO certified uh, welders. You know, we are losing that, those jobs. This is one area of concern for the Nigerian government. Local content is not fully harnessed, developed and promoted. However, the government is determined to bolster the economy, create jobs, reduce poverty and usher in a brighter future for Nigeria. And the magic wand for the Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology is Executive Order No. 5, which government wants to deploy to address the challenges by providing support for made in Nigeria goods and services development of homegrown capabilities and the capacity to maintain, redesign, reproduce, rededicate and duplicate infrastructure built in Nigeria for self-reliance and development. 
This drive to industrialize explains the federal government's push for establishment of six centers to train indigenous welders to international standards, one each in the geopolitical zones of the country, who will be ISO certified. In the wisdom of our president, he has asked that we do everything in line with uh, Renewed Hope Agenda, that we do everything to make sure that those centers are established so that our people will get certification, we get the training needed, and get certification from, uh, from international bodies to upgrade them to international standards. That the Presidential Executive Order number 5 has introduced what is called domestic firm. The Executive Order number 5 also seeks to closely monitor and promote the capacity of Nigerian professionals and contractors in science, engineering and technological programs to compete favorably with their counterparts globally. In the meantime, there is a Strategic Implementation Tax Office of the Executive Order with a mandate of operationalizing these objectives with its Presidential Monitoring and Evaluation Council. Justin Bemuni, NTA News. And the Nigerian Air Force Officers Wives Association, NAFOA, says it is raising the bar on awareness about cancer through a series of activities commemorating World Breast Cancer Awareness Month this October. National President of NAFOA, Rikia Abubakar, and former Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Talon, took part in some of the activities, including health work, lecture and free cancer screening exercise in Abuja. During the lecture on routine checkup, a panacea for early detection, NAFOA President Riki Abubakar highlighted a WHO report which she says indicates that more than 78,000 cancer-related deaths were recorded in Nigeria in 2020 alone. Breast and cervical cancer has topped the list more than 40% of all cancer-related deaths. Ricky Abubakar says, based on this report, NAFOA is lending its voice to shore up awareness across various NAF barracks and communities. And operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, have arrested a 67-year-old drug trafficker at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, for ingesting 100 wraps of cocaine now, the suspect was arrested during an inward clearance of passengers on an Ethiopian airline and taken for body scan, which then revealed multiple pellets in his stomach. Also, bought in separate raids across states like Ogun, Kanu, Gombe and Edo, a total of 767 grams of cocaine, 50 kg of cannabis sativa and 300 kg of skunk, as well as 50,000 capsules of tramadol were also intercepted and seized across the four different states. In addition, cannabis sativa farms were destroyed during the raids. Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the NDLEA, Brigadier General Mohamed Bubamarwa retired, applauds their counterparts in all the commands across the country for what he says is intensifying the war against drug abuse WADA advocacy lectures creating a fair balance between drug supply and drug reduction activities. Suspects arrested in connection with seizures made by Federal Operations Unit Zone A Ikeja will be made to face the wrath of the law at the end of investigation. The Acting Controller General of Customs, Bashira Dini, disclosed this while briefing the press on the latest seizures by the unit, which include eight trailers loaded with 70,029 bags of 50 kg foreign paboid rice. Bolaji Akim tells us more. Apart from interception of the paboid rice, Acting Controller General of Customs Bashir Adini commended the courage and spirit of patriotism demonstrated by men of the unit, which led to the seizure of other goods, including two 40-foot containers with 360 bales of used clothes, 150 cartons of ladies' handbags, 50 bales of sneakers, and other falsely declared items. Other seized items are 
used fridges, compressors, expired hair oil, unprocessed wood, foreign frozen poultry products, and 25 units of Tokumba vehicles. The Acting Controller General assures the public that the customs will do everything possible to check the activities of smugglers in all Nigeria borders. The objectives of these operations were twofold. The first one is to discourage potential traders from engaging in smuggling activities, and the second is to inflict maximum financial losses on smugglers. We have in our custody 14 suspects in connections with the various seizures. Adeniye reiterates customs determination to key into federal government's commitment to achieving self-sufficiency and enhancing the quality of life for all Nigerians. The cumulative duty paid value of the intercepted goods amounts to 1 billion 757 million 80,889 naira. The acting controller general called on all importers and licensed agents to avoid trap practices and adhere to existing import guidelines so as to avoid the risk of losing their investment. In Lagos, Bolaji Aki, NTA News. And the federal government says the ongoing restructuring of the end power program will create employment for 5 million young Nigerians in five years. Now, this follows the temporary suspension of the end power program. A statement by the national program manager end power indicates that the restructuring and transformation of the Empire program is expected to expand the program to reach beneficiaries aged between 18 and 40, beyond the previous age limit of 35. He notes that the action has become necessary to give room for detailed investigation into the operations of the Empire scheme. The ministry discovered instances of beneficiaries whose participation elapsed since 2022 but have remained on the payroll. In addition, some beneficiaries who do not report to their places of primary assignments as required but still receive monthly stipends. Some others, some have other jobs and have left this bracket but are still benefiting from the scheme, while those who truly worked are not paid. Those instances the manager says, have made the need for a thorough audit to look into claims of being owed for up to eight to nine months to ascertain the ver veracity of their claims. This is to earn the confidence of the people in the expanded and restructured program to provide for transparency and accountability as the ministry continues to make concerted efforts to put the nation on the right footing, ensuring that no one directly or indirectly unleashes suffering on Nigerians. Now the attention of the FRSC has been drawn to a report that a court martial is seeking the permission of the federal government for personnel of the court to bear arms. A statement by the court public education officer, public BC Kazim, says the Irenaeus' statement credited to the representative of the court martial at the passing out parade of cadets at the Nigerian Army Training Center, Quintagora, Niger State, does not reflect the current position of the court martial and the management team. Members of the public should therefore take note, the statement says. All right, let's bring you some sports news now. And no away win recorded in the Nigeria Premier Football League this Sunday. And in Kenya, Calvin Kiptum shatters men's marathon record. Badi Adelaye will bring us details on sports update. And President Bola Ahmed Chinimbo expresses his condolences to the Ogumbanjo family and the entire Ijabodi community on the passing of their patriarch and elder statesman, Dr. Christopher Oladipo Ugbanjo, who made landmark contributions as one of Nigeria's most celebrated corporate lawyers. Now, the president joins family members, colleagues, friends, and well-wishers of the late legal luminary in mourning the loss of a distinguished figure in Nigeria's legal and business communities, whose multifaceted roles as an industrialist corporate lawyer and philanthropist 
had left indelible impressions in these important fields as he empowered and mentored numerous professionals from Nigeria and beyond. As an honored recipient of several prestigious dividendsy titles, such as Dulutu of Ijebuland, Laranja of Egbaland, Baderu of Lagos, Laranja of Egbaland, Babaoba of Ijebumushi, and Babaoba of Enomo Ijebu, the president pays the president pays tribute to Pao Gubanjo for consistently dedicating himself to championing causes close to his heart, including grassroots community development and advocacy for peaceful coexistence between Nigerians from diverse backgrounds. President Chinimbu urges all who are mourning to reflect on the extensive contributions he had made to the progress of humanity and to carry forward the ideals he lived for. The president prays for the peaceful repose of Pao Gubanjo's soul and divine comfort to his family and also to those loved ones who have had this irreparable loss. For our weather advice for Abuja and the rest of the country for tomorrow, let's now join our weather centre. And that's the news from Abuja and Jennifer Igwe will be back shortly. Uh, but don't also forget she has quite an interesting package, education for one. I mean, without education, how would you know that a smile can keep you younger? So wait for it. To ensure students understand the subjects being taught and gain knowledge, Teachers often employ a variety of methodologies. In Akure, for instance, as part of activities to commemorate the 2023 World Teachers Day, a school principal demonstrated how new students should look. Ife Olua Omosule captured the interesting tutorial. Teachers Day is commemorated every 5th of October, which was set aside by UNESCO to appreciate the invaluable roles teachers play in the education of people across the globe, while the rest of the world, including Nigeria, is celebrating, even teachers celebrating themselves. A video of a man spotted in school uniform in Akure on those states went viral. The man is Adeni Yoluyide, the principal of St. Michael Catholic High School in Joka Akure been teaching for three decades and a school principal since 2018. Teaching the students about the norms, values and ideas of the community, that is the school. From there, the aims and objectives will be spelled out to the student and the student will be sensitized on how to behave in secondary school. In most schools, it is a common knowledge for old students association to wear the school uniform during anniversary but for adeni Oluyide, a school principal it is uncommon they were so happy they were full of joy and it was so amazing the students they even by the time i walk out they start they didn't see me as their principal they saw me as their student they mingle with me each one of them they want to touch me they want to see me as if they have never seen me before. Laughable as it appeared, the teachers and students were inspired by their principal's act. He made himself so humble. You know, the students saw him that day as part of them. They saw him as a person they can easily assess. I feel excited because <laughs> being, being a leader is not easy. St. Michael Catholic High School, Ijoka Akure, on those days, was established in 1980. How can we ever forget teachers? They always go the extra mile to help us understand. Now in Nupe land, women possess an eminent 
position and the running of the cultural society. For over a hundred years of its history, the royal palace of Nupe lives with the princess queen, who is literally an overlord over all women of Nupe land. For Hamis Rogo, her influential role in Nupe society is a staff for history writers. The air of celebration in the palace of Nupe is by this. The movement is relentless. The noise is fever pitch. Even the heavens turn down a bit, so the celebration is unimpeded. I find a quiet place within the palace to make sense of the happenings around me. Particularly captured by this recurring scenario, women are 100% around the mix of this celebration. I was in Bida for days, and in every passing day, women stood out to assert their presence. They danced, they campaigned, they relaxed, and are actually at every segment of the celebration. It is a cultural orientation that has its roots in Nippeland's handling of women affairs in the traditional society. It is empathetic and inbuilt in the social system of the area. For over a hundred years of its existence, the Nupe Royal House lives with a princess queen who attends to all matters relating to women, open without recourse to the Etsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call her Saigi. Saigi is not merely a royal title, but an interesting royal fixture to serve the women of Nupe land. This special recognition plays into the soul of the women, and it exists before the advent of women advocacy movements. I sought out my colleague Zainab Halil, who is Wambida to meet the Saigi of Nipe in person. At the door of our palace, this woman gives us a prologue. Where we are sitting here now, this is where the Saigi sits if she comes to the Amir's uh, palace. palace. Okay. This is her sitting place. Okay. And every other woman you see here are all princesses or they are her own guests. But I mean, when, in, when the Etu is in palace, she sits in palace with the No, palace. no, no, she doesn't sit in the palace. Okay. But if there's any message, they, con they, they call her to, condol to talk to her and she will pass the message to all the women. We were ushered into the palace where the Saigi sits in council. Her courtiers are mostly from the houses of the Nupi land. Mm -hmm. Women, all of them. I cannot wait to talk to her. The actual Saigi is an elderly person and uh, her old bones will not allow her to be able to speak to me. But then she has a very able lieutenant, a yoga sister, same parents taking on her roles and then trying to define for us all that thing that Sagi do and what makes her different in her roles in the Sagi de she ne sarota na mata. Sagi is the Etsu of the women. Like the Etsu is for everybody. When Etsu Nupe has his hands full with women matters, like conflicts in the family, issues of inheritance, custody of children and abuse of societal values, the Etsu hands them over to Sagi for resolution. In most situations, resolutions are achieved and the society moves on. The Sagi lament the degeneration of cultural values in the society now and how there is a need for renaissance to bring back values of decency, honor, integrity and mutual respect. It happens that there is another title of Sagi, but it goes to medicine women in Nupi land. These people are appointed and recognized by the royal Sagi with the approval of the H Nupi. But their work includes mystical curative interventions and traditional medicine generally. Their work reflects the demand of ancient Nupi society, which spills over to this time. They are all over Newfoundland. I took my leap from the palace of the Saigi, and I was lavish with the gifts, biscuits, chewing gums, and this local fan from a woman who identified herself as the eldest sister of the immediate past Ezu of Nupi, Umar Sanda Ndayako. Now women, we are very strategic in cultural preservation, and I'm glad they're taking advantage of it. The Ngas tribe in Plateau State, located in the central senatorial district, known for its spectacular landscape and um, topography in Jos, has unique, a unique festival that brings the sons and daughters of the land home annually. It is called the Pustung Festival. Caleb Goshin has 
was part of the 2023 festivities. Nigeria is here. Indeed, the world is here. Attracted by an undiluted culture of a people blessed by nature. It is not a speech-making event, and if for anything, it is a meeting point for the Ngaz nation and her allies from across the globe. Long time no sees meet. Business and political associates interact with the tourism-inclined minds savouring the rich culture of the Ngaz people. Whatever your passion is, you will find it here at the Pus Dung Festival. <laughs> Beyond the fun and excitement are words of admonition from elders and opinion leaders on how to move the land forward. The history of this nation cannot be completed if you don't bring the gas and gas people in it. It is from this race that we've got the longest serving head of state. To, to keep the tempo, the momentum of being a front when it comes to cultural integration and cultural activities, to remain peaceful. So rich, so beautiful, and I think this is a pivot of uh, getting gas to be united and Plateau State to be united. Develop mechanism of unity, love for one another. For my women, I, my message to them is that let them continue with the unity. And gas people are united, just like our slogan, Askadaya Maganada, one mark, one voice. Governor Caleb Mutfang, who was represented by the Secretary to the Government of Plateau State, dropped this cheering news to the people who for years have been without a paramount ruler. The government has set up a three-man committee that has already swung into action and very soon the selection of the Ngas, Ngolongas is going to take place and you will have a new paramount ruler. How about this traditional work of architecture that seems to occupy a special place at the event? They live in a rocky place in which from a distance you can uh, see your enemies. So it is uh, literally called a gas tower. But you can see the crowd. You can see how our people are excited because of our rich culture. As a leader, I think it's an objective fulfilled. Well, from the foregoing, it is clear that Plateau State is not referred to as the home of peace and tourism for nothing. Now, history and cultural preservation, they go hand in hand, so we must have more of such festivals. A smile is a universal non-verbal communication that has the power to unlock joy in the hearts of many. The first Friday of every October is celebrated as World Smile Day to create awareness on this and other benefits. Radiate joy is a theme for the year 2023 World Smiles Day. Why? Let's find out. Simple, yet very powerful natural expression that resonates across global cultures and civilizations, understood, felt, and cherished by all. On the first Friday of every October, the beauty of smile which brightens lives and is fear is celebrated, reminding people to smile and spread happiness by practicing one of life's most precious gifts. What are people's perspectives about smile? When you smile, people will love to be around you. And also when you smile, you make people to be happy. Psychologically, smiling is very important to a human health. Smile makes you to have joy in your life. Whenever I smile, normally I feel I'm okay. I can be happy and smile. Maybe I can be surprised and smile. World Smile Day began with Harvey Bowling in 1999, the artist who designed the iconic Smiling Fest. He championed this special day to remind the world of the importance of kindness and compassion. He believed the world needs more smiles to brighten people's day, make them feel better and even turn their whole world around. Take a look at this example of natural between a mother and her child. Oh, 
<laughs> Social dimension of smiling manifests in friendship and approachability, serving as bridge that interconnect people. What's more, smiling possesses that magical mechanism that makes one more attractive. Smile because it's healthy. Uh, when you smile uh, religiously, smiling is something that you know will make other people feel comfortable around you. It gives me happiness. It gives me joy. It gives me strength. It go with all, all. It can refresh all my brain. Sometimes we smile act of happiness. Scientifically speaking, there is a research that smiling is good all the time. Yeah, smiling is very important in the aspect of human life. Smiling makes the world go round. Smiling is a facial expression of how someone feels. Smile keeps my happiness and uh, it usually takes my worries away. Smile is happiness and smile increases the value of the face. Mentally, uh, smile uh, brings us a long life. Even in Hadith, our prophet says we should be smiling. A simple smile can make a difference in the life of people around you. And sometimes a smile can open doors for you. And like Claire said earlier on, there's an old Chinese belief that says a smile can make you look younger. So let's keep smiling. And still on the benefits of smiling, let's hear from Daini Kume Ulolo in Yenugua. <laughs> Smile as a facial expression of wellness and pleasantness is a simple way to make the world a better place to live. This simple yet powerful gesture radiates warmth, happiness and kindness. It is a universal language of positivity and connection transcending cultural and linguistic boundaries. A genuine smile has a capacity to not only lift people's spirits but also brighten their day, mend relationships. How often do Nigerians smile? I smile a lot because I believe there is a better future coming. Uh, smiling is uh, an indication of happiness. It's an indication of well-being. Um, and the importance, it's, it's good to smile, you know. It gives a good impression when you meet people and you smile. You know, it's, it's, uh, it shows confidence. Sometimes all it takes to make the better is a smile. In spite of the body, wear a smile. And if there is an edge on your face, let it be marks and tails of your smile and not because of frowns or the stress. Uh, so people are really stressed up. Smiling is healing. It has a healing. Um, it's attracting some kind of hormones that we call endorphins. You know, endorphins are happy hormones. and happy it tends to bring your what we call your cardiorespiratory indices down it brings your heart rate down it brings your um, um a part of your brain that is called your limbic system your the part, the part that controls emotions observers are of the view that the best thing for people to do is to smiling faces every day just as the theme of this year is radiate joy <laughs> Of course, we'll continue to radiate joy and smile more. So let's keep smiling as we take a break and we'll return shortly. Thanks for being there. As part of its corporate social responsibility, one of Nigeria's leading and indigenous product manufacturers, Erisco Foods Limited, has distributed food items to 200 vulnerable households in Albasu, local government area of Kano State. Mohammed Ibrahim has more on this. Moval of fuel subsidy by the federal government, many households in Nigeria have been faced with different challenges. In a bid to cushion the hardship being experienced, Erisco Food Limited distributes food items to vulnerable households in Albasu local government area. In Kano, where our Erisco chairmen come from, in Albasu village, Alaji Bashir Albasu, AIG uh, retired, and uh, Makaman Gaya. So, hence I believe that uh, we need to be building bridges, crossing the nation to uh, help the humanity. Every human is somebody, no matter where you come from. So that's our reason and our conviction that we we'll continue to support people that have none. 
The selection of beneficiaries and distribution of items were done in concert with local leadership of the community. As people with special needs, widows and elderly people were identified. I drive joy in seeing people that is happy, courtesy of one or the other thing from a risk or from me as a person. That's my reason and uh, I wish to continue like that by the grace of God. Alhamdulillah, I am grateful to every school company. I pray that may Allah Almighty reward them. The district head of Al Basu local government area, while commending the effort, advised the beneficiaries to make proper use of the items to improve their socio economic condition. We feel extremely happy and grateful for this assistance, and we pray to Allah to boost the company so that more and more of such assistance can come to our people. The beneficiaries of this assistance he gave, my message to them is that they should please use this assistance with their family in the house. The gesture by ISCO Limited will go a long way in providing succor among the beneficiaries. <laughs> great initiative we must care for others all around us now honesty diligence and resilience are essential virtues that can sell a person to the world and attract enormous worth two young nigerians we featured on newsline who are shining with such qualities have received donations again from philanthropist chief eric omofia it takes strength of mind and character for a man who doesn't earn much and whose family sometimes not sure where the next meal will come from to return over 15 million naira forgotten in his tricycle owner. That's the story of Awal Salisu. His integrity has made him a star and opened doors of opportunities for him. It is also commanding respect and admiration from different quarters. Adding to that list of honors is a donation to him by philanthropist Chief Eric Mafia, a man who understands and appreciates the importance of these virtues. They marveled me. So I have no choice than to extend my support to them so they will encourage the youth to continue to do well and uh, be straightforward. For raising a son who sees honesty as a way of life, Awal's father got a gift as well. Alima Jibrin a blind student who is also earning a living as a chef, is one of outstanding Nigerians featured on Newsline. To encourage her efforts, resilience and unique abilities, Chief Eric Mafia made a donation to her. She can on her prepare food, do this one, ah oh, yeah. And while people that, uh, some people that have a uh, complete uh, sight are very lazy to even go and uh, look for what they are going to eat. And I want her to continue to have courage. If someone like that will have courage of, on this aid, that, that there's more good thing in life, then with that is able, some people will think, I don't have enough money, do this one, do this one, be envy. No need of envying people, no need of uh, doing more than your, your shadow. So I, I pray that God will continue to support those uh, that are behaving the same way. Integrity, diligence and determination to thrive in an honest and noble way are qualities Awal and Alima share values that are showcasing them to the world and brightening their resumes as exceptional Nigerians who have carved a niche for themselves through strength of character worth emulating. Honesty, diligence will certainly take anyone far. And we say thank you to Chief Eric Mafia for always reaching out and encouraging other Nigerians. Now to culture. Drum beats, sounds of gongs, flutes, and other traditional musical instruments blended with mounting excitement of the people at the installation ceremony of His Royal Highness Abubakar Ahmed Yakubu as the fourth EJ Ankba and Chairman Ankba Traditional Council in Kogi State. Michael Abije, who was part of the ceremony, says it attracted people from all walks of life. This is a story of how a prince became a king. It is one, definitely for the books, which posterity will remember as well as attended and witnessed by many sons and daughters of the ancient city of Angpa. The 
cultural and significance of this event is not lost on those who have gathered to bear witness on this day. The coronation of the AJ Angpa has only happened three times in history, and so the installation of the fourth AJ Angpa is not a mere rehash of traditions. It is a ceremony that speaks to continuity in the customs, history, and feature of the people of Angpa. <laughs> Presented with the symbol of royal authority by the government of the state, Yahaya Bello, the new AJ becomes the mouthpiece of his people, carrying their collective visions and working with the state government in developing crawling communities. He is going to draw more investment opportunities to this Angpa local government, to Igala Kingdom, to Kogi State. The new AJ Angpa, His Royal Highness Abubakar Ahmed Yakubo, realizes that ensuring peace, unity, and the progress of his domain is of most importance. I stand before you as a servant of faith, a vessel chosen by destiny to safeguard our cherished tradition and values, to protect the sanctity of our land, and to lead our kingdom towards prosperity and unity, inshallah. For an event of this magnitude, the presence of high-ranking traditional leaders in Nigeria led by the Sultan of Sokoto, Al-Haji Mohammed Sa'ad Abubakar III, lends credence to the momentous occasion. Their goodwill messages centered on building a better society. One where leaders lead by example and followers carry out their obligations. But this is the day on my dear Allah said, this activity will hold and we we'll thank him for making it possible. Meanwhile, a banquet in honor of the new AJ, Angba, which heralded the coronation, was itself a rollout of eminent personalities in the country. In attendance, we are traditional from across the six geopolitical zones of the country with the governor of Kassina State, Diko Umar Rada, former governors, members of the Federal and Kogi State Executive Council, members of National Assembly, principal officers of federal and state institutions in attendance. <laughs> The 45 year old AJ also sees his father who reigned until his demise between 1993 and 2016. I just love the way we promote our culture and the installation is another opportunity to display the rich cultural heritage. I will say congratulations to the new traditional ruler. Now, the now we go to the Benin Kingdom. After many years, the Emoro Festival is back to the Benin Kingdom. The Oba of Benin, Oba Ewari II, says he has made it a point of duty since his reign to revive long lost traditions and revive the culture of the Benin people. Anguli Okoli, Okolo, Anguli Okoli, Anguli Okolo tells us more about this festivity which marks the harvest season in Benin Kingdom. This year, the palace issued out a circular inviting the public to take part in the feast, thanking the gods for a successful harvest. The Commissioner for Arts and Culture, Dr. Uyo Duwa Malaka, and the former Governor of Edo State, Senator Adam Soshumule, joined the throng of people who paid homage to the Oba of Benin. The Oba provides leadership and guide all of us to continue to do what we must do to protect and uphold the culture of our people. It's a rebirth. We're all excited about it. And it's something that we're going to continue to see. The Amoro Festival, also known as the New Yam Festival, is one that celebrates the produce of the year. Thanksgiving is offered to the gods and ancestors while also giving opportunity for brotherliness as the community comes together in unity to eat the new yam. Before a Benin person commence the eating of a yam, they, normally there have to be a celebration to kickstart the new yam, the eating of the new yam. We thank the Oba for initiating this, uh, you know, bringing up again. And uh, it's very necessary, we must continue to, you know, uphold our customer tradition. It is unique, it's part of our culture, 
and we're happy to be part of this uh, historic mine. So, since he came to Troon, I think this is the first time he's doing it for us, so we all are happy. I believe that uh, in the next year, uh, celebration, there will be governization before this event. The festival is usually preceded with a one month long fast. And culture, whether, wherever it's from, whether from the north, east, south, every part of Nigeria is beautiful. We'll take a break now. We'll have more stories when we return, so don't go away. Thanks for being there. Our next report is about Deputy Superintendent of Police, Mohamed Musa Adamu, a unit commander attached to Mopole 45 Abuja, who led a 63-man unit to Galademawa Forest in Kaduna State to rescue some Nigerians who were kidnapped while in transit. Today, DSP Adamu is incapacitated as a result of bullet wounds he sustained. His situation further deteriorated despite eight surgical procedures, forcing him to solicit for public assistance in a video that has gone viral. Francis Form reports on his flight plight. Sir Adamu, when he was still active in service, and this is DSP Adamu moving out from the police hospital, Area 11, Garki Abuja, on crutches, Two years after his encounter with bandits, DSP Mohamed Adamu served at different squadrons, including Mopul 37 Lokoja, Yobi, and Mopul 53 Bama, before his transfer to force headquarters. I, I went to different kind of operation. I recover arms. I recover stolen vehicles. While in Mopul 45 force headquarters, there was an incident in Kaduna and DSP Adamu was nominated to lead his unit comprising 63 mobile policemen and some soldiers for a mission in Galadima forest. While in the forest, they succeeded in the operation. After an intense gun battle, they were able to neutralize the bandits and recover arms and rescue those kidnapped. In the process, DSP Mohamed Musa sustained bullet wounds in his abdomen, thereby destroying almost the whole of his system. While his orderly was killed instantly. A bullet penetrates right from my left hips. It penetrates and cut off my urine vein, cut off my rectum. That is where I used to pass toilets and bust out and pieces this ball joint here in the right uh, hips. So. Since, since that 2021, I've been battling from one hospital to another. After eight months at the hospital in Zaria, SP Musa requested for referral to Abuja for better attention and considering the proximity with his office and home. While at the specialist hospital in Abuja, DSP Musa got some financial support from Kampol Mopol at the force headquarters, his bosses and colleagues complimented a loan he took from his bank and IPPIs for his medical attention. After undergoing surgery eight times, DSP Musa could only pass urine through the catheter, and so he became traumatized and relocated to the bush to stay. And uh, if I pass toilet, that is a two, two, the, the toilet used to come in a two channel, through my anus and a place, there is a portion where a bullet destroyed and according to the doctors in Nigeria here, they said there is no kind of surgery that they can do in this country. And they also uh, testified to me that 
Even my erection, I have lost my erection completely as a man. It was in the bush that a video of him soliciting for assistance was produced, and it went viral. Management of Human Rights Radio and TV Abuja to garner assistance for him featured him on its radio and TV show. It was on the show that Chairman of Police Service Commission Solomon Arasi was informed about the matter and he immediately weathered into the officer's situation. He requires a complete reconstruction and when, when that is going to happen, he, you know, he needs a that psychological reassurance, have a place, a decent place to stay, have family members to be with him while these things are being done. So uh, the next step we are taking, I have also booked an appointment to see the Minister for Health because of his own uh, international reach, so that at least he will be able to help us view the listing and see who, who can we bring in from anywhere in the world that can come and you know, take our facility here and see how they can do that reconstruction and uh, encourage the IG to, to recommend him for national honors. You see, the idea is that when people are appreciated for the little things that they do, it resonates, you know, with their colleagues. While acknowledging the support he got from former IGP Usman Al-Khali Baba, Kampol Mopol, and the squadron commanders in the force. He hopes that the present leadership of the force will also come to his aid. I collected loan from my salary account, Eco Bank. I collected from uh, IPPIS just because of my condition. I have, a, I have five children. I have, I have eight younger ones. There is no father, no mother, and, and I'm the only person that is working. We never abandoned him, and we will not abandon him. So I, I, we have tried to reach out to him again. Uh, the, the chairman service commission was aware of the matter. He took it up, and the IG2 has been briefed. But if he needs more help, he could have come to the police family. And we all know that PMF is, it has a structure, and has a system, headed by assistant inspector general of police. If you see the way Nigerians reacted to, to his plight, you could just, you just tell you that Nigerians are good people. You know, and uh, that is exactly what I want his other colleagues to know. Hmm. And I'm sure Nigerians and Nigeria will not abandon this hero. We will have an update on his story for sure. Now in a world where many who want children of their own don't even have, the thought that someone can dump a newborn into a canal is not just shocking, but heart-wrenching. Ebinimi Zitimiyola N is following a case that happened in Azikoro community in Yenugwa, Bayelsa State. Residents of Azikoro town Friday morning to a sorry sight of a newborn dumped in a canal under the Azikoro bridge. The scene that attracted passers-by and motorists caused traffic obstruction on the busy Azikoro Agbura road. Some bystanders condemned the act of dumping babies, no matter the situation. You know, some picking a picking to the swallow that is not good. So no way to, I don't know what to say to her. I don't know. It's not fair. It's fair, it's fair. Nobody can say that this is uh, something that, uh, what no one can say. Every person I see they must condemn it. Because it's, a, it's an ungodly act. Why not making excuses for perpetrators, teenage pregnancy and the refusal to take Responsibility, we are partly blamed. We are always uh, fighting against wanting our parents to take care of their children so that they should avoid teenage pregnancy because sometimes the father does nothing. He cannot uh, take care of the baby, neither can he take care of the mother. Parents, government and non-governmental agencies as well as faith-based organizations have been called upon to sensitize and amplify the sanctity of life to cope the arts. Heart wrenching indeed. And I'm sure um, we'll have good stories about that child. Now, the revered traditional royal drums and 
trumpets of the Zazao Emirates came alive as the 19th Emir of the Historical Kingdom celebrated his third year anniversary on the throne of his forefathers, the Emir of Zazao, Malam Ahmed Nuhu Bamali, had earlier given out the hands of the daughter of the 14th Emir of Kanu in marriage. Dauda Mohammed covered the grand event for Newsline. The majestic palace of Zazo Emirate witnessed influx of well-wishers from diverse personalities who came to participate in the third year anniversary of the 19th Emir of Zazo, Malam Ahmad Nuhu Bamali. <laughs> Chief Imam of Zazo, Malam Al Hatu Kasim, led other Imams from seven Jumat mosques within Zaria city to offer special prayers for the health and well-being of the Emir as well as progress and peaceful coexistence of the Emirate, the state and country at large. The Zazo Emirate in the last uh, three years it has gone far and is continued development. You can also see even the palace is undergoing numerous and various uh, construction and uh, resettling. Uh, this shows that uh, we have a focus educated and who is also humble enough to carry his people along. I think we know very well that he has really achieved a lot of uh, uh, strides in his effort to ensure the development of Zozo Emirates. We have seen it in all facets of life. I congratulate the Emir for three years in, in office as the Sarkin Zozo of 19th Emir of Zozo. I wish him every success in his life. Praying for him to succeed and uh, end well. What remains in our lives, ours and his, Allah Ta'ala may put baraka, peace, unity, progress. It has been a very positive and fruitful journey, a journey of development, a journey of unity, a journey of compassion. These are all attributes of the Emir. As part of the celebration and to further deepen the bond among the four ruling houses, three sons from the houses were turbaned by the Emir. Adamu Idris turbaned as Sa'in Zazo. Ibrahim Idris Ibrahim as Ahmada Minzazo and Muaz Nuba Mali as Barad Minzazo. Say a great thank you to His Highness Ambassador Ahmad Nuba Mali, the Emir of Zazo. Earlier, the bond of Zazo and Kanu Emirates were further cemented with the wedding fatia of Hafsat Sanusi Lamidu and Uthman Suleiman El Kudan joined together as husband and wife after satisfying all Islamic injunctions and the payment of 200,000 naira as dowry. Advise them to uh, use the medium of uh, you know understanding in between them to sort out all their differences. The only thing we would tell them is to keep the understanding and love that got them together forever. Be patient, understanding, fearful of God, and, 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 and they shouldn't allow sad fatty to come into their marriage. They have to be patient always and forever. I wish them a successful marriage. Hafsat Sanusi Lamido is the daughter of the 14th Emir of Kanu, while Othman Suleiman El Kudan is a businessman. <laughs> you when we started that we are loaded today with celebrations and events that project our cultural heritage. Let's take our last round of commercials. Newsline will be back. Welcome back. One narrative that is not too popular in Plateau State is jungle justice. I'm sure you'll say good. Unfortunately, however, it is rearing its ugly head in the city with the recent gruesome murder of a 35-year-old businessman. Now, Wimbe Thomas Gofwan, by, a, a believed to be a commercial motorcycle rider, Caleb, Caleb Gushin, has been following the story for Newsline. Viewer discretion is advised. He is in his prime with big dreams and like any other day, he was up and doing to make ends but oblivious of the danger that lies ahead of him. 
day done and time to return home. Then the unexpected happened. A mop is in his trail after someone raised an alarm, accusing him of being a thief. <laughs> If it is a coincidence, it is indeed too weird to say the least, especially coming from youths who in most cases blame every other person except themselves for the ills in the society. The home of the Gofans, parents of the deceased, has been thrown into a mourning mood as individuals and groups troop in for condolences. He was a son, a very promising son. Um, something, a moment, I'm yet to find the answer. But I've requested the security to unravel what is happening, to find the perpetrators, let it not be it on any soul. For the whole life of Fimbe that we know, Fimbe has never stolen anything. The car he was driving was the car that belonged to him. So we just don't know what happened, but it is impossible from our thinking and the film that we know for him to be involved in a theft. Here is an innocent man, uh, a businessman, and uh, uh, what has happened has made us to have a, a think, a rethink, because what has happened to film can happen to anybody. He's not a thief. If you are going to hold a thief or catch a thief, and those bikes that they came, they came in number. That's what I had. And when they came in number, if you are going to catch a thief, if you are in number, you surround the person. And when you surround that person, you catch him. Plateau State Government has also expressed her worries about the incident with a promise to ensure that more is done to rid the state of criminal elements. I don't know the motive of the killers. It's, it's traumatizing for everybody. The state um, sympathizes with the family and would like to condole them. And we know that it is God that gives life and he's the one that takes and we must give ultimate reverence to him. However, for the killers, um, the police, I'm sure, are doing their job. They will fish them out, and the law will take its course, no matter who they are. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Police Command in Jaws has paraded one of the prime suspects with an assurance that the other suspects would be fished out to face the law. As I speak to you, we are presently on the trail of um, more than five persons and just as we have called you for this particular one, we will continue to call you um, as we make more arrests. We are in Tudumada Park, so we saw one taxi man is calling the boss man a thief. So we follow the, the man. Where I stand is the infamous road where Fwimbe met his untimely death. This monument here is also being erected by the family in his memory. No, no, no. Oh, it's it's not an easy road. As the family of Fwinbe mourns the death of their loved one, the clarion call is that all relevant authorities should redouble their efforts at checking crime and criminality anywhere in the nation. Mob action is a no-no and a, a crime and justice must be served in this case. Now to sports. Sports in Nigeria has been more of a roller coaster ride since independence with many highs and lows recorded. It is a general consensus that the country's potential in sports hasn't been fully developed to bring commensurate success. Sports correspondent Bade Adeleye in the next feature takes a look at Nigerian sports over the years and how the abundance of talents in the country can be harnessed for international glory. And on that sporting note, we end Newsline for this Sunday. Thank you for watching and being a part of it. Join us again Sunday next week. Good night and God bless Nigeria.